Welcome back to another edition of the Counter Strike Breakdown uh, in our esports segments here at Fantasy Sports Insight. Uh, I am Hold the Door DFS on Twitter. Uh, you can find me there and feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Uh, this week, we will be starting uh, the DreamHack Masters tournament uh, on Tuesday. Uh, so hopefully tomorrow we get the pricing out pretty early uh, to kind of get after that. There will be a video tomorrow for that slate. Uh, so expect that. And there is a chance that we might have a special guest, uh, which would be phenomenal. Somebody that is uh, pretty big into the CSGO uh, esports uh, industry. So um, tune in tomorrow. It's going to be awesome, especially if we can get him to, to kind of hook up and come on. Uh, just to get another perspective on how people are building and how people are playing uh, CSGO in the DFS fashion uh, compared to just playing the video game at home. So uh, let's jump into today's slate. I am going to touch a little bit on a lineup study for my lineup today at the end. So if you want to uh, just kind of get in inside uh, some of the things that uh, I do when I build and some of the comparisons when I go back and look at it, uh, make sure you watch through the whole video or scroll through at the end if you want to catch uh, me just kind of breaking down my lineup uh, there at the end. So let's start uh, with uh, the odds. First, um, the biggest favorite on the slate is Simon Gaming. Uh, then it's uh, Nordavind, and then it is Endpoint. And we'll go through each of these games. Endpoint is our first match here. Um, but I think most of you would probably recognize Simon Gaming uh, if you've never really paid attention to any CSGO except for Road to Rio. They did, uh, they did compete, uh, and they did not do all that well. Um, and that's why when you, we look at their stats, you will see that um, they do really struggle, but this is like the best uh, possible matchup that they have. So we kind of have to try to, um, I mean, best possible matchup they've had in a long time, and they are definitely the superior team in this matchup. So I think that we do have to kind of try to look at the underlying numbers and see where we can pull from rather than just recent statistics that uh, aren't that pretty. So let's go to Endpoint first. Uh, we have uh, Endpoint and Aves. Uh, I think if we look at the pricing, it's pretty obvious. The three top players um, for Endpoint uh, are the three top price players in this game are Endpoint players, which is pretty typical for the favorite. Um, Crucial and Thomas are the two of those three that I am considering. Um, if we go to their database here, uh, and remember, I am always using the lineup context. I really like to see their builds together when these five are playing together. They've actually played together quite a bit, 134 maps. Uh, and Crucial is by far the, the best uh, performer, even with a 1.2 K kill to death ratio is, is pretty, pretty great. So these two uh, top my list, absolutely. Um, Robin, if you see, uh, is actually rated the fourth best according to this. Uh, and, and I think his price is based off of the best of one that uh, he was on the last slate and played really well. Uh, I want to say it was at Inferno. Uh, he was able to take advantage of a lot of smokes in the house and just kind of wait until that cleared. And he, and he was able to clear out quite a few guys that way. Had a really good game on the showdown slate, I remember, but not somebody at 8,400 I am targeting uh, in on this slate. Uh, for uh, uh, Azev, uh, we have um, Kay and Marco would be the two that I would consider. Uh, but again, I'm not really prioritizing, especially Kay is super GVP just at that price tag. They are the, the, the closest underdog, so I think you can make a case for him. But 8200 is still a, a kind of a significant price tag to, to be paying in that spot. Um, Mighty Max for Endpoint is a complete fade for me, and Surreal at 4800. Uh, is certainly in play with uh, how he lines up statistically on their team and in the long run. So I think you have a lot of options there from Endpoint, even though they are the smallest favorite of the three. Uh, I think there's definitely some, some players there to look for when you're building your lineups. All right, moving over to Simon Gaming. This is probably the hairiest of uh, the games just for the fact as I mentioned before that Simon hasn't been playing very well. Um, Kiaz here it, at 8600. I, I, my best barometer that I could kind of go off of was who was performing well at Road to Rio and, and he was performing the best. Um, him and Moo 
Uh, Norbert was pretty bad, had a lot of games under 40 points. Again, I know that the competition's a lot harder. Um, and if you look here, um, Keos is rated their second. You know, that's only by a, a, a sliver here over Norber. Um, actually has a better kill-to-death ratio. Um, less negative, but uh, I think uh, these three here at the top are the ones that you would probably consider. But I do think you can make a case for Kriyas just as a punt. Um, but again, I don't really love the underlying numbers for these guys, so I would try to stick to the top three for how big of a favorite they are. Um, Mu and, Nor uh, and Norber are, are definitely cheap enough to find a spot in your lineup. Uh, Keos, you have to kind of be deciding either to punt at captain or uh, probably fade um, either Thomas or Crucial, maybe picking one of them. And then defend, depending on how you attack uh, Nordovan, then that will kind of dictate uh, which players from Simon you are going for. I just feel like the, the matchup's really good, but there's a little bit more uncertainty on, on, on who is going to perform uh, well for Simon. So I think getting at least one or two of them in cash is a good idea. I just don't feel super confident to, to put one into my build, my first cash build, as the first staple in my lineup, even though they actually come in as the biggest favorite. So I think and, and in light of that, I think it creates, uh, it will hopefully create some uh, differentiated ownership, which I do think on these smaller slates uh, with people with unknown names and things like that, that the ownership does get spread out quite a bit. Um, but you will see players typically just taking the most expensive and or going off of their game logs. And, and one thing that you got to be careful with the game logs too here, um, you know, you have Endpoint who played a best of one. So they're, and that was their only DK slate they had. So their fantasy point averages are on a best of one, okay? Uh, Azev played a best of three uh, in which in a matchup, I'm pretty sure they were a pretty big favorite. Uh, so their scores are at a best of three. So uh, that's where, if you're listening to a video like this, I'm hoping that you're gaining that insight that uh, the game logs are very misleading. Uh, the fantasy points per average are very misleading, but allow the others to make those mistakes and not yourself. So let's move over to Fate versus Nordovan. Uh, Tenski does great out as uh, their top player. Uh, with a plus 69 kill to death difference, uh, 1.05 kill to death ratio. Um, HS is uh, not really second. I don't, that's on his rating, uh, his 1.0 rating. Uh, I really do like uh, Nato Safix as the second uh, player that I would consider. HS has been a pretty poor form along with Croman, uh, and I'm definitely not considering uh, H4RR3 here. So, I do think the two players that I would consider here from Nordovan are Tenski and Nato Safix. And I do like that Nato Safix or Nato Safix, however you pronounce his name, is under 7K. So that definitely makes uh, it appealing. And again, uh, don't be skewed by the fantasy points per game here. Uh, also, uh, I think when you look at Fate, they're too big of an underdog to really even take a stab. Uh, for me here in cash, I think uh, in the showdown slate, you will have to play at least one of them. Uh, and I think, um, you know, you're probably going to consider Mar or Duplicate uh, in, in the showdown slate because that's all you really, that's as far as you'll have to go down likely to make a lineup work, especially if you're using Tenski and uh, NATO Safix. So uh, I think that's where you're going to kind of start and end. I think you, uh, Definitely my favorite cash plays are Crucial. Uh, they are Tenski. Uh, then I would start to, I would definitely go past uh, Robin. Uh, Keos potentially. Um, I do think you would have to probably make a decision here between Thomas and Keos. Um, and depending on how your ownership or how many you have from a team, um, remember, you can't have th more than three from one team, but Endpoint is the smallest favorite on the slate, which also could mean it's more competitive and goes three maps, which again, in that case, uh, would benefit them if they do not just get swept on one map badly. So I think, uh, again, we have a lot of options here to pick from. Um, if you're looking for that value, uh, remember Surreal, and you also have uh, Kriyas, uh, Nato, Nato Safix, um, I do think it's a slate that you could, you could live in, in the mid-range too and kind of keep it balanced. 
Um, I don't think Tensky is really worth 10,000 uh, compared to what his statistics are. Uh, he's not somebody that's just blowing it out of the water, but in this kind of a matchup when he's the best player on the team, and if you can make the salary work, I definitely think it's viable. Um, but I think if you start with Crucial, um, and then probably deciding between Tensky and Kios as your next plays, and then moving down to the uh, Norber, the Moo, or the Nato Sapphix. That's probably where uh, in your cash lineups I would start to build. Uh, so hopefully that helps you uh, start your building for your slates. Uh, I am going to quickly jump over to yesterday or today's lineup uh, in my head to head matchup. Uh, just to kind of talk about a couple things. But remember, if you're going to sign off now, that tomorrow I'll uh, be out, uh, be in the lookout a little bit earlier than usual um, for uh, some content for Tuesday's slate, which we expect to, it would be a three game slate, I believe, uh, for the DreamHack Masters event. Uh, hoping to get a special guest on uh, that would be able to kind of give uh, another opinion on some of this. So I uh, hope to see you guys back. I'm going to jump over right now to my, my other page here. So uh, this is kind of where I ended up in cash with Murat Captain and Plopsky, Nock, Lecro, Jame, and I disbalance. Uh, uh, I think the difference here, um, obviously I had Jame, he had Buster, um, which was pretty disappointing the way that Jame played. Uh, I know he was really high owned in other contests. Um, I had to head just decided to fade him, which ended up working out for him in terms of that 1v1. Uh, Jame had I think 31 and a half points after the first map and then scored a total of five points over the next two maps if you subtract the rounds not played. So that was pretty brutal. Um, I think I had a 61 point deficit going into the uh, third and last match matchup between Heretics and uh, Ninja in Pajamas. But this is where the part of the process that I did feel that uh, really came through. Um, when you kind of looked at the underlying stats between on Ninja and on NIP Ninja and Pajamas, Twist was clearly the worst player that I didn't really feel like I needed to consider um, because the most expensive player that I wanted on the slate was only 8,800. Um, then I went up to, then you're looking next at Lecro, Nock, and Rez. Well, Rez was 7,800, Nock was 7,000, Lecro was 6,200. Um, the underlying stats between those three was pretty minimal, pretty close, and I even you know, knock, I think, rated out better than Rez. Rez had a few good recent games, but again, uh, that three month, 12 month sample size really did favor knock. And, and Lecker was right behind there. And so to take a $1,600 decrease in order to get knock in there uh, and not have to go down where he punted with Magics, which he actually played okay, um, but them actually sweeping really quickly, especially in that, that second map against Windstrike. Um, kind of limited their upside a little bit. He actually played better than I expected. Um, but Lecro, just the last map, you know, he had a four kill. And then I think it was two rounds or three rounds later, he had the ace. Uh, and he had the first four kills in that other round where he had the four kill, but he didn't finish the ace. And then uh, it, it was almost like, uh, you know, he sniffed so close to it. He really wanted to get that, that, that ace. And he did, he did come through and get that. Um, so, uh, again, trust trust your process. Don't just plug guys in and just hope for the best. I think um, even the fact that Nock and Lecro perform so well, if I'd ran this again and again and again, I would expect Jame to probably outscore Buster by 15 to 20 points most times, if not more, if he hit a ceiling game. So then I'm really feeling like I'm in a good spot because I think I just balance um, matches uh, some die young and certainly surpasses Magic's um, you know, a majority of the time. So I think when you are looking, uh, go back into your contest, check out some of the sharp players and see how they're building. Uh, feel free to reach out to me and ask questions. Um, one last thing, uh, I think on probably on Tuesday this week, we will be recording our Call of Duty breakdown with Eddie Kruger, uh, our, uh, our head, one of our head esports guys at FSI. Uh, we will break down Friday's slate. Uh, and potentially even get on uh, Saturday morning, maybe before. The salaries don't get it uploaded quickly enough, usually after that last Call of Duty match ends on Friday night. We will see the time frame uh, to be able to potentially get another uh, video content up of that second map because there's a lot of great strategy and 
in the COD that we need to, uh, that you can talk about and learn. And if you haven't got a chance, we did talk about it. The last slate, um, some strategy. Uh, we'll probably focus more on the player pool and the teams this time, but feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Uh, we hope to see you. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Give us a like. Uh, hope to see you back.